Welcome to Sew with Monty. Today we're going to drape a shawl collar. And I'm beginning with my torso block, which we've done in several of the videos that you've seen in the past. And what I've done is I've laid my torso block onto my muslin, and I've done a dotted line around the outside edge, capturing my seam line. And placed my dart points in here, and all the uh, sewing dart points and punch holes. The next thing I've done, on the front side, center front of my jacket, I've added an inch and a half from the center front line for my overlap for the front of my jacket. I've marked my waist suppression, because that's going to be my break line in my, in my lapel, and we'll talk about that on the form. Then I've added five inch margin up the, through the center front, and then a six inch margin across the shoulder here. And I've connected the two by intersecting the two lines and filling all of this in. Then I've come back and I've opened up where my shoulder seam is going to be so that I can sew this to the back of my jacket or my torso before I start doing my drape. So let me show you what I've done to the back. So five inches, six inches. This is all this area right here is going to be what we're going to be draping with. That's why you want to leave it nice and full so that you don't short uh, cut yourself when you get to the form. Now the back is simply the back torso. I've added an inch on the back so I can turn it under and give me a good secure edge to pin to. And a half inch around the outside so that I can sew it together to my front. The next step is we're going to sew this together and press it. Shoulder seams will be sewn together darts will be put in, side seams will be shown, sewn together, and then we'll go to the form and we'll start draping. So now we have our muslin pressed, sewn and pressed, and pinned to the form. In the back, I've pressed under the one inch panel and I've pinned it from the high, uh, neck, center back neck all the way down through the waist and into the hip. Making sure everything's aligning, I've pinned high point shoulder, this is very critical, and as I've done this, I've sewn the shoulder seam just to the point where the seam is and stopped. I didn't sew up, up into my drape area. Pin the high point shoulder and the shoulder point. And then I haven't pinned the front neck yet, the center front neck, but I have pinned the waistline. The break point is going to be right at my waist. So this is going to be our break point. This section right here from center front over to here is going to be my overlap. So this is going to be, my buttons would be sitting, I'll have one button, and it will sit roughly right here. About a three quarter inch button that will sit right here. So this will be my overlap, it will be one inch here, one inch over there, so a two inch overlap for my, my uh, uh, front jacket. The section here is all about the lapel, and this part will be about the collar. This is our break point, just above the button, so right here, this is where our jacket will actually break. And I'm going to do a little clip there because that's very important to us at this moment. We want to know exactly where that point is. And you want to pin your jacket down on the break point so that it's secure. Because everything from there is going to fold back. See, and that's the prelude to our lapel right here. Now, let's talk about the back neck because once you have this and you've got it folded back, you've got your high point shoulder secure so it can't go past that point. But you need to address all of this, right? So you want to pull your collar back up and make sure, let's turn it sideways, make sure at the side neck it's hugging the neck right here. Now, depending on how wide your lapel is and what you're predicting, sometimes you can take a pinch here so that it fits better. But since our drape is so wide, we're not going to pinch the side neck at the collar area. We're just going to leave it smooth and come around like this very smoothly and find the center back neck. Now once we find the center back neck, let me get a few pins over here. We're going to pin the center back neck and I'm going to pin the base of the neck first so that I'm lining up with my back seam of my uh, torso and then I want to come up approximately an inch and a half here for my back neck. Okay, and let me get that pin in there really good. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to measure, and then I'm going to show you how to fold this over and start creating the collar. So now you have a closer view of what we've got going on here. And I want to measure from the base of my center back neck 
up to my desired pinpoint. And I've got about an inch and five eighths here. Uh, that's pretty good for a jacket. Now, if it were a collar, I'd probably lower it to inch and a quarter, inch and a half. But I'm going to leave it at an inch and five eighths, and I'm going to go ahead and draw in my center back line here. Now, at this point, it's time to start clipping. We're going to take all of this off and start clipping the neck so that it can relax and fall into place and get rid of some stress lines. So at this point, I don't even need this over here anymore. I'm just going to cut a little extra past that and let it go. Now, notice how it's stressing out here. We need to clip in here. We want to make sure we just clip to the seam line because that's going to relax all those little wrinkles and let it lay where it needs to be. Now, clipping is better than trimming because you may find that as you clip, you have to adjust your pins, just as I had to do that one right there. Now, once you have your back neck clipped and everything's laying right, you want to draw in your back neckline on your back collar. See? Just like that. Now, I'm going to turn this down, and the next step is we're going to go back to the front and we'll start working on the lapel. Okay, I want to show you something here that is an option, but it sometimes is a very nice option. You can put a small dart underneath the edge of your lapel collar area. The reason being, a lot of times you have a hollow area in here from your collarbone to your apex, and this dart makes the collar lay closer to the body. It also pulls the collar and lapel away from your neck so it's not choking up around your neck. If I don't have this dart in here, if you notice, and I'm laying here, see how we have all this crinkling going on? So the dart kind of takes that out. Now, very important that you keep the dart beyond your neckline point. So the dart starts at the neckline point, but it goes up into the collar lapel area. So don't put the dart down into the body of your jacket here. And I just want a small dart, like three, three eighths on the double, three quarter total measurement. Okay, so we're going to pin it, pin the dart right alongside of my neckline seam at the beginning up here so that it will merge into where my shoulder, high point shoulder is. And I'm just going to pin this out, trying to keep it about three eighths of an inch thick, down to zero, right beyond my lapel crease. I don't want the dart to show where my lapel crease is, so I, I've got to keep it beyond that. So I'm going to stop it right here, right, right past the hollow of the body. Just going to put this little dart in. Now like I said, this dart is optional. You don't have to do this. It just adds a little finesse to your lapel and collar when you're done. See? And see how much nicer it lays in there now with the dart in there? So it's just a little pull to get some of the wrinkles out and lets it be more refined when you lay it back across your shoulder. So now we're going to turn it back at the break point down here. And that break point's on the side with the button extension. And you can see, by adding that little dart in there, see how much nicer it lays around the collar and the lapel? It's, it keeps it from choking up on top of your neck, like this. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw in our pretty lines that we want to use for our collar. So I'm going to use this big marker, and I'd like to do a rounded um, shawl collar. So I'm going to start, I'm going to, I don't want it to exceed the apex, so I want to just find that apex in there and mark that point. This is my break point, so that'll be the beginning of my turn, and I want to build it. And this collar can take on many, many different shapes. At my shoulder, I want to be about right here. So I'm finding these landmarks, and I'm just sort of drawing in my neckline and my lapel. Now I can make it larger or smaller, just depending. And I'm going to cut it back just a little bit. I'm going to leave a little ease on here, but I don't want to have all this fabric, because this fabric changes the dynamics of how this fits. And I need to get it pretty accurate so that I can go ahead and finish my back neck. At the shoulder, I'm just going to cut this off square. And you can see, just by getting rid of all that extra fabric, how much nicer it starts to lay here. See? See how pretty that's starting to lay? And see how our dart is keeping this edge of our lapel away from our neck and not choking us up. It's not choking out our neck. It looks really pretty there. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and clip it right here because I like the line. And I need to decide what I'm going to do here in the back neck to continue on what I have back here. So I'm going to take my pen again and I'm going to start where I left off. And I want to come down in the back 
just be about an eighth of an inch below where I left off with my collar. So I want to see what this does and just sort of take off a little bit here. Just still keeping a half inch margin around through here because I want to see what happens when I trim away this. And I just want to clip a little bit in here to the actual line and see how I like it. Now you can start to see it almost immediately how much nicer it shapes up. So in the back we have to determine where our center back line is going to be. So you want to pull it taut, not too tight, don't put stress lines in it, but just pin it down so that on this outside edge of this collar we know where our turn is. Because this has to be a fold line here. And we want to make sure that our collar is going to line up right here. So this will be our fold line here. I'll put FL. This is center back neck and then this is the bottom of our collar. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the final step. I'm going to trim off all the extra and give it a really good look and see if it's everything I want it to be. So I'm just going to go back on now and trim off on my line. Now once you have your drape finished, you go back to your table and you make a duplicate of your torso and add this part to it, making sure that all the necklines line up. If the back neck needs to be adjusted, the collar length or shorten the collar uh, length on the back so it fits the neckline of your torso, that's okay. You can do that. And you just work out any little wiggles and bumps you have in your drape so that it's looking really nice and smooth. It's quite easy, quite fun to do, this, this type of draping. I really like to do collars and lapels. Now with interfacing and a facing, it's going to have a lot more shape and life to it. So there you have it. Everything's trimmed off and that's your shawl collar draped. And here's your back neck. As you can see, it's going to be very pretty once it's made up in fashion fabric.